Is that it? Help me get this out, Bertie. That you back there, Mr. Worcester? Yes, yes, it's me, Mr. Perry Bear. Come on, Bertie, hurry up. I've got to get home and change. Good evening, Miss Pendlebury. I'm not stopping, Jeeves. I'm just making sure my painting gets here safely. Come on, Bertie. Just put it down over there. Over? There. Just lean it against the desk. Carefully now. Not too near the fire. I'll varnish it tomorrow. Right. <coughs> well, I think a small whiskey's in order, Jeeves. Very good, Sam. You haven't got time, Bertie. We've got to be at the party in an hour. I'll meet you at Gilhooly and Pim. Do you know the address? Uh, good. Bye-bye, Jeeves. Uh, good evening, Miss Pendlebury. What a wonderful girl that Gladys Pendlebury is, eh, Jeeves? She certainly seems a most vigorous young lady, sir. Eh? Yes, and looked upon as something of a hot tip in the art world, too, I'm told. Uh, go down and do the picture, William Jeeves. I'd like your opinion on the work. Very good, sir. You may ask, Jeeves, why I should spend perfectly good money commissioning a portrait of Aunt Agatha, Scourge of the Worcesters. It did occur to me, sir, to wonder. Well, this comparatively small investment, Jeeves, may well allow young Bertram to live out his remaining years in peace and tranquility. Struck all of a heap by her nephew's apparent homage, said Scourge will give a heartfelt blessing to his marriage to the talented artist who limbed said portrait. To wit, Gladys Pendlebury. If you say so, sir. Jeeves, you don't like this spot of art? In my untutored opinion, sir, Miss Pendlebury has given Mrs. Gregson somewhat too hungry an expression. A little like a dog regarding a distant bone. There is no resemblance whatever to a dog regarding a distant bone, Jeeves. The look to which you refer is one of wisdom and tolerance. I particularly asked Miss Pendlebury to include that look, at no extra charge, I may say, in spite of the fact that such an expression was far from apparent in the photograph she worked from. I see, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. <laughs> we hope you're all having as much fun as we of Gil Hooley and Pim are. <laughs> My name is Lucius Pim. And just as our agency is proud to be advertising Slingsby's new range of superb soups, I'm proud to introduce you to Mr. Alexander Slingsby. <laughs> We will not fail the American people. Come rain, shine, or snow, through good times or bad, we will continue to provide Slingsby's superb soups to the tables of this great country mark. <laughs> I just love advertising, don't you? Well? Oh, look. Here comes Lucius now. You were wonderful. Well, thanks. Bertie, I want you to meet Lucius Pym. What, oh, Lucius? You in soup? Well, not yet. <laughs> well, excuse me. Bertie! <laughs> Tommy! I thought you were back in England. No, 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 I'm here. I'm trying to meet Alexander Slingsby. What for? I can't tell you, Bertie. I'm sorry. It's a secret. Do 
you know what the best soup in the world is, Bertie? Well, I always like that one they do at the drones the day after we've had shepherd's pie. What they do is they, they no, take... No, 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 no. It's a soup called cockaliki. My old nanny used to make it for us. Oh, there are millions in this, Bertie. Now, I'm going to sell old Slingsby the secret recipe on a royalty basis, you understand. For every tin of soup they sell, I'll collect a <laughs> And yeah. what does Slingsby say? Yes, yes. Well, I haven't been out of meeting yet. It just doesn't reply to my letters. I mean, that's why I've had to come here to... to... Well, anyway... It can't fail, Bertie. I just have to catch a whiff of that soup and I'm... Oh, transported back to my childhood. But does the populace at large want to be transported back to your childhood, Tuppy? That's what we have to ask ourselves. What do you mean? I say, there's Elizabeth over there. Who's Elizabeth? Elizabeth Vickers is the woman I intend to marry, Bertie. Marry? Well, congratulations and all that. Yes, well, in fact, she doesn't know anything about him yet. Uh, I'm going to ask her tonight. Well, come on. My husband will be so interested. Alexander just lives and breathes soup. Uh, hello, Elizabeth. Um, I'd like you to meet an old friend. Hildebrand, this is Mrs. Slingsby. Of Slingsby's superb soups. Oh, how do... Most awfully sorry, I... You're so clumsy, Hildebrand. What the hell do you think you're doing, mister? Are you all right, Tallulah? Uh, well, I, I, I was just... Uh, uh, Mr. Slingsby, I, I, I don't know where you got my... You keep out of this. Yes, 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 right. But leave Mrs. Slingsby alone, Worcester. What do you think you're doing? <laughs> well, all the... You know, cut, cut along, cut along now, Worcester. You've done quite enough damage for one night. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, what my idea is this, uh, Mr. Slingsby. Now, I have this humdinger of a suit. I'm not at all easy in my mind about a certain cove by the name of Lucius Pym, Jeeves. Apart from the fact that he's something called an advertising agent, and as such apparently in a position to do Gladys a bit of good professionally, his hair waves. One must never discount wavy hair, Jeeves. Thank you, sir. I shall endeavour to remember that. Will that be all, sir? Yes, Jeeves, that'll be all. Good night. Good night, sir. You know, it's strangely satisfying sitting here watching you varnish Aunt Agatha. As a matter of fact, my Aunt Agatha is something of a byword in our circuit. Isn't that so, Jeeves? Indeed so, sir. In what way? Well, you've heard of the Gregson Price Art Gallery? Of course. Well, my Aunt Agatha is the Gregson bit. Her name being Mrs. Gregson, it was only to be expected, I suppose. This is Agatha Gregson? Absolutely. Coffee, Miss? Thank you, Jeeves. But why didn't you tell me? If she liked my portrait of her, it could do me a lot of good. Well, of course she'll like it. Won't you, Jeeves? I'm sure Mrs. Gregson will lose no time in expressing her opinion of the work, Miss. Yes, we must get her to see it as soon as possible. Of course, dear Aunt Agatha's in England at the moment, but uh, we'll take it over with us next month. Mrs. Gregson to see you, sir? Ah! ah. That it? Aunt Agatha, what are you doing in America? Sit. As you can see, Bertie, your cousins have at last been apprehended. Apprehended? Kindly do not interrupt me, Bertie. They sail for South Africa tomorrow on the Pride of Natal. I... Good. Uh, is this supposed to be me? Uh, well, as a matter of fact. What an extraordinary dog. Now, well, look here. And who, pray, are you? Ah, well, I'm, I'm glad you asked that, Aunt Agatha. Don't you talk to me like that. You are not the dealer, I trust, who's trying to pass this discoloured canvas off on my nephew. Oh! Gladys! Gladys! Wait, wait! Never speak to me again, Bernie Worcester! Gladys! You see, I knew it. One comes to recognize these shady art dealers, you know. That was Gladys Pendlebury. She painted the picture. Oh, poor girl. You should have told me, Bertie. Had I known she was responsible, I would have been more forthright in my criticism. You could hardly have been more forthright, Aunt Agatha, without physical violence. It is as well for a young girl to be aware of her shortcomings early on in life. But to get back to Claude and Eustace, they leave tomorrow morning. But aren't they in the middle of their term at Oxford? They were expelled a month ago. We behaved badly. We realise that. Very badly. Uh, do be still. Their father is determined that they shall start life anew in the colonies. Their father's been dead for years. It is but a veil, Bertie. The veil can be pierced. Until they sail, they're in your charge. 
Mine? You'll put them up here tonight and see that they're at the docks, ready to board the Pride of Natal tomorrow morning. Jolly decent of you to put us up, Bertie, old thing. Oh, not at all. No, I only wish it was staying a good long time. You hear that, Eustace? He wishes it was for a good long time. What do you propose to do, Bertie, in the way of entertaining your handsome guests tonight? Um, well, I suppose we could have a bit of dinner in the flat. And afterwards? Afterwards. Uh, well, I, I thought we might chat of this and that, and, uh, and then it struck me that you'd probably want to turn in early, as your boat sails first thing in the morning. Afternoon, sir. Oh, oh, Jeeves. Jeeves, I'm, I'm getting too old for all this. I feel like something has been rejected by the Pure Food Committee. <sighs> what time is it? Just before one o'clock, sir. What? The, the boat, the boat! I put Mr. Claude and Mr. Eustace into a taxi for the docks myself at half past seven, sir. Oh, thank heavens, Jeeves. Hey, one. Well, at least I may have satisfied the scourge. What on earth am I going to do about Gladius, Jeeves? Aunt Agatha's behaviour really was beyond the rabbit-proof fence. Indeed, sir. Um, would you prefer breakfast or luncheon, sir, when you're dressed? Oh, breakfast, I think, Jeeves. No need to let standards drop. Uh, just run my bath, will you? Very good, sir. <laughs> Hello, Bertie. Had a nice, refreshing sleep. You're meant to be in South Africa. It's like this, old man. You remember that wonderful singer you introduced me to at Ciro's last night? Marion. Marion. We're soulmates, Bertie. Oh, pish. Soulmates. Anyway, I gave old Eustace the slip at the customs shed and slid back here. Is that breakfast you're having or lunch? Uh, I'll go and see what old Jeeves can rustle up. I'm famished. Smooth work, Bertie. Smooth work. Oh, my aunt, what are you doing here? I eluded poor old Claude in the customs shed and snaked off in a taxi. If you seriously expected me to go sloping off to South Africa, you shouldn't have introduced me to Marion last night. Oh, what a girl, Bertie. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not a man who falls in love with every girl he sees, Bertie. I suppose strong and silent are the best adjectives you could find for me. But when I do meet my affinity... What do you think you're doing here? Have you come back to inflict your beastly society on Miss Wardour? Is that why 
you sneak back here in this underhand fashion? Underhand? I like that. Well, may the best man win, that's what I say. Never mind about the best man, what about me? Suppose Aunt Agatha finds out. Hmm? Hmm? What time did Mr. Claude and Mr. Eustace get in last night, Jeeves? Uh, one at 3.45, sir, and the other at 3.50. <sighs> How do they do it, Jeeves? Well, sir, I read an article last week in Scientific American which propounded the theory that we all contain something which it called a body clock. In the very young, this mechanism acts less like a clock and more like the mechanical toy which runs randomly around the floor at high speed, only changing direction when it bumps into an obstacle. Yes, well, all I hope is the spring unwinds before they bump into my Aunt Agatha. Indeed, sir. Meanwhile, we can only watch and pray. Miss Pendlebury is still proving obdurate, Jeeves. She wouldn't answer my telephone calls yesterday. In my experience, ladies who spell Gladys with a W are seldom noted for their reliability, sir. It gives them romantic notions. With a W, Jeeves? No, 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 no. Spell it with a G. Mm, if I might draw your attention to the signature on the portrait, sir. Good Lord. G W. I blame Alfred Lord Tennyson and his idyls of the king, sir. It also accounts for Catherine, Isabel and Ethel, all spelt with a Y. But Gladys with the W is a particularly virulent form, sir. Well, well, well. Ooh. Come on, Bertie. We are going out to celebrate my engagement. Engagement, Tuppy? You mean the poor unwitting girl said yes? She did. I told her. I said, I may be poor but honest now, but we could soon change all that. In a couple of months' time, I'll have the whole of New York at my feet. Well, all the ones who like soup, anyway. And she fell for it. She saw reason, Bertie. <laughs> <laughs> Hook, line, and whatever call it. But it's the truth, isn't it? I mean, old Slingsby thinks my cock leaky recipe is the bee's knees. I mean, his lawyers are drawing up a contract and everything. Well, congratulations, Tuffy. I always say that one day your talent will be recognised. Well, come along, lunch is on there. Good afternoon, Mrs. Gregson. Jeeves, where is my nephew? I regret to say that Mr. Worcester is not at home, Mrs. Gregson. You may be surprised to learn, Jeeves, that I saw Mr. Eustace not ten minutes ago. But surely, Mrs. Gregson... I plainly saw him, Jeeves, standing on the corner of 42nd Street and Broadway. This is sinister news indeed. My nephew was distinctly instructed to get those boys onto that boat. He was given that one small responsibility. What do you mean, sinister? Did Mr. Eustace look pale, perhaps? Pale? Well, yes, now you mention it, but uh, well, of course with the life he's been leading. Mm. And what precisely was he doing, Mrs. Gregson? He was hailing a taxi. I see, standing perhaps like this? Yes, yes, yes. I sincerely hope that all is well with the two young gentlemen. Well, why shouldn't it be? You'll pardon my saying, Mrs. Gregson, but Mr. Claude and Mr. Eustace are surely on board the SS Pride of Natal. I saw them myself into a taxi bound for the docks on Thursday morning. And yet now you tell me that this morning you saw the pale figure of Mr. Eustace standing with arm upraised in valediction as you passed by. I'm uneasy. Uneasy, eh? On my way to the gallery this morning, I saw quite clearly, as clearly as I see you now, the phantasm of poor dear Eustace. The what of poor dear Eustace? Pay attention, Bertie. The phantasm. The wraith. Oh, oh all right, Aunt Agatha. It's a fair cop. I try. Do be quiet, boy. It was only for a moment, but it was so clear. 
that for an instant I thought it was Eustace himself. Do you think those poor dear boys are safe, Bertie? They've not met with some horrible accident. Uh, oh, I see. A, 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 a phantasm or wraith. Um, well, I mean, to say by Jove, it's always possible. Those in peril on the sea and whatnot, it's pretty dangerous stuff, water, you know, typhoons and so on, waves. Don't blither, Bertie. No, right. Well, I'm sorry, Eustace. Marion does not want to see you. She as good as said as much last night. What rot? She distinctly said to me that she was fed up with you hanging around like a vulture with the crew. Ah, the many persons I've got a bone to pick with you. Oh, not now, old chap. No time for bone picking. I'm just off to take Marion to the races. I'm taking Marion to the races. Neither of you is taking Marion to the races. What? You were seen this morning by Aunt Agatha. No. Fortunately, she's got it into her head that you were some kind of wraith. That's why I'm going to the wraith track. <laughs> Very amusing. Yes, well, jolly as it may seem to go around giving Aunt Agatha shocks, I must from now on absolutely forbid you from wandering at large around the metrop. <sighs> well, I suppose we could buy a couple of disguises. My dear old chap, the brightest idea on record. That's settled then. What a lark about the accident, though, Bertie, eh? <laughs> accident? What accident? Jeeves? <laughs> Jeeves? Good afternoon, sir. No, indeed not, sir. No, no, that's what I thought. However, you were about to inquire, I beg to imagine, sir, who is in your pyjamas in the second best bedroom? Well, yes, Jeeves. Yes, call me an old fuddy-duddy, if you will, but that thought was in the process of crossing my mind. Miss Pendlebury had the misfortune to run over a gentleman in her car almost immediately outside this building, sir. He sustained a slight fracture of the leg. But Miss Pendlebury is all right. Physically, her condition appeared to be satisfactory, sir. She was suffering a certain distress of mind. Ah, well, that's her beautiful and sympathetic nature, you see. Now, it must be a hard world for a girl, Jeeves, with fellows flinging themselves under the wheels of her car in an unending stream. But what's the chump doing in my pyjamas? Uh, it was Miss Pendlebury who desired the gentleman to be brought up to the apartment, sir. She also instructed me to summon a medical man and to telephone the gentleman's sister. What's his sister got to do with it? The patient's next of kin's. Uh, this sister appeared most desirous of seeing you. Ah, wanting to thank me brokenly, I suppose, for putting up her little brother, eh? Possibly, sir. And on the other hand, she did allude to you in terms suggestive of disapprobation. Feckless idiot was one of the terms she employed. Feckless idiot? Ah, Worcester. You didn't tell me it was Lucius Pym. I didn't wish to distress you any further, sir. <sighs> well, how long was he going to be here? About a week or so, I fancy. A week? Now, about this accident, Worcester. My sister is married to Alexander Slingsby. What, the, uh, the soup man? Yes, I, I met him the other night. Yes, the point I am trying to make is that my sister loves me devotedly. And she might try to persecute poor little Gladys if she knew that it was she who was driving the car that laid me out. But she doesn't know. I told her that I was knocked over by a car driven by you. But wait a minute, wait a minute, by me? She'll be calling on you tomorrow. And I recommend, if you want a pleasant interview, that you sweeten her a bit. Uh, send her some champagne, uh, a few smiles, a tactful word or two, and she'll be melted before you know where you are. Oh, my blasted nerve, Jeeves. The gentleman does seem to have an ample supply of effrontery, eh? Well, if Lucius Pym thinks I'm going to get a knuckle under to this ludicrous scheme of his, and then Lucius Pym has got another thing fast approaching the five furlong marker. We Worcesters are made of sterner stuff than the Pims of this world imagine, Jeeves. I'm sure that's true, so. <laughs> Still, wouldn't do any harm to send a case of champagne, I suppose. I'm having dinner with Tuppy. I could leave the old days behind, leave all my pals 
I'd never mind I could start my life all anew If I had you I could be a king dear uncrowned Humble or poor Rich or there is nothing I couldn't do if I had you. Well, I'd just like to say that old Tuppy's a lucky dog. It's Elizabeth and Tuppy. We're going to be very happy together, aren't we, darling? Yes, well, if you ever remember that I'm here, I suppose that's just possible. You haven't taken your eyes off that fat singer since she came on. But she was singing. But, do, do I have to stand up and sing in order to get any attention? <laughs> of course not, darling. I was just... I have never in all my life been so humiliated. <laughs> what does she mean? Elizabeth! Poppet! What ho? Bertie, we took your advice. Oh. Miss Pendlebury, is she not, Mr. Pym? She's a great girl, Jeeves. I just can't seem to get anywhere with her. Such a pity that her work is confined to so small an audience. It has often struck me that the man who will win Miss Pendlebury is the man who can further her career. You don't have to go running after that fellow Pim all the time, you know, Jeeves. It's really no trouble, sir. Huh? If he wants a room service, he can jolly well go to a hotel and pay for it. Any sign of the dreaded sister here? No, sir. Well, I'm going to get on with practising my putting. Thanks you, I should have my entire schedule put up. Very good, sir. Oh, Jeeves, have a think about the Gladys Pendlebury in Brolier, will you? I'm absolutely at my wits' end. Certainly, yes, sir. And uh, will that be all, sir? Uh, yes, Jeeves, that'll be all. Alexander Slingsby to see you, sir. I need hardly tell you why I'm here, Worcester. Oh, no, of course not, absolutely. No, it's that uh, little matter of... Little matter? Let me tell you, when I find a man has been annoying my wife with importunities, I regard it as anything but a little matter. I shall endeavor to make you see the thing in the same light. There must be some mistake. There is. You made it. First. You molest her at my party. Then you send her liquor. Trying to lush her up, are ya? No, no. Yes, yes, yes. Ah! Oh, oh, oh. Help me, Tallulah. My what have you done? First my brother, then my husband. You beast! Bertie! The gladius! I... Worcester's cousins aren't around, are they? Uh, no, Miss Wardle. Thank God for that. Bertie, uh, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to do something about those cousins of yours. Well, you're seeing a good deal of them, are you? I can't take a step without tripping over them. I'm leaving town, Bertie. Uh, it can't be as bad as that, surely. 
can't it just? They've taken to calling at my apartment together. They just settle down grimly and try to sit each other out. It's wearing me to a shadow. I've taken an engagement at a resort for the summer just to get away from them. Oh, this is a bit steep, Jeeves. Approaching the perpendicular, is eh? It's them! Um, Jeeves, quick, the fire escape. This way, miss. Bertie, I haven't slept a wink. I came to tell you that I must leave New York for a few days. I simply must rest. Well, I think that's fine. I'm so worried about poor Claude and Eustace. I sent a cable to the ship, but I've had no reply. No, well, uh, they, they do it with flags and all that sort of thing. It takes a bit of time. Please don't let him talk nonsense, Jeeves. Very good, madam. I shall be in Long Island for the next week or two. I'm staying with Mr. Prysak's nephew and his wife at Bayshore. I hope that the next time you see me, I shall be more like myself again. She scratched the fixture, Bertie. No, she has. She won't let me near her. Refuses to talk on the phone. Sends back my letters unopened. Well, firm stand is what's required here, Tuppy. Never let them see the whites of your eyes. They can smell fear, you know. What's the point of me making a firm stand? If she won't see me, she won't know I'm making it. Anyway, she's gone off to see an aunt at the seaside. Well, then follow her, Tuppy. Show her you're not to be trifled with. <sighs> no. No, I, I, I couldn't, Bertie. Not all by myself. Tell you what. Why don't we both go? Me? <laughs> A spot of sea air might put some wind in our sails. Don't you think, Jeeves? It's always possible, sir. My sails can do with a bit of wind in them. What's this Bayshore place like, Tuppy? You've been there before, haven't you, to my cottage? I didn't know you had a dreaded cottage. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Just rented it for the summer. Just, uh, well, just a little shack, really. <laughs> Bayshore, please, one way. Bayshore, please. Bayshore, one way. Bayshore, Long Island. Ma'am. What about a brisk walk, eh, Tubby? I don't think so, no. She's just over there, Bertie. Not half a mile away. Laughing. Joking. But we could go down to the beach. Elizabeth might be there, on the beach. You might be able to save her from drowning or something. I can't swim. You kept up with the roses, Jeeves? Yes, indeed, sir. A dozen delivered daily to Miss Vickers with Mr. Glossop's name on the card. On the chocolates? Yes, sir. Well, he doesn't do anything. Follows her all the way down here, then just moons about the place, rubbing ointment into his mosquito bites. One is consoled by the reflection that it is a healthy life, sir. Mm. He's become quite a popular pet with the mosquitoes. They never bite me, do they? You? No, sir. Well, they are, you see. They just seem to hang around waiting for Tuppy. They want to be in good condition for him. Jeeves, that's her. That's Elizabeth Vickers. Indeed, sir. And that blob covered in sand and ice cream must be a nephew or something. It would appear so, sir. Jeeves. I have an idea. Nay, an inspiration. I should be most interested to hear it, sir. We are going to kidnap that child. I shall be returning to the cottage now, sir, if that is consistent with your wishes. No, it dashed what is not consistent with my wishes, Jeeves. I can't carry out a thing like this single-handed. I regret that the terms of my employment do not permit me to take part in criminal activities, sir. Oh, what rot, Jeeves. We're only going to borrow him for an hour. In any case, there's nothing remotely criminal about bringing two loving hearts together. That is not an assertion I should care to see tested in a court of law, sir. Well, you disappoint me, Jeeves. Is this the way that Jeeves's of old faced fearful odds? I should imagine, sir, that it must have been, or else the line would have been speedily extinguished.
Well, is it possible to stop it making that dreadful noise, do you think? I mean, don't they have a switch or something? I wonder if they like honey. Bound to, I should imagine. Yeah, I think I might have a bit of a talent for this. Anyway, to return to the matter in hand, there's Elizabeth, distraught and guilty because she's misplaced the child. Dear old Tuppy suddenly appears, leading the infant by a rather sticky hand and telling some story to the effect that he found it wandering at large around the countryside and then practically saved its life. Well, the girl's gratitude is bound to make her chuck hostilities and become friends again. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. There's something in this, Bertie. Take it for a minute. I'm covered head to foot in honey. Well, serves you right. It was your idea. Look, where did you say she was sitting? Um, over there with those, those dicks. Look, there where? she is. There, there, there. Oh, yes. Oh, Elizabeth. No time for all that here. Well, she doesn't seem to be doing much searching. But she, she's looking out to sea, wondering if it's drifted off, I dare say. Yeah, that's right. Well, <clears throat> here it goes. at all. It's just some kid she met at the beach. She was helping it build a sandcastle. She'd never seen it before in her life. She just listened like an iceberg while I went through the story about saving its life, then told me I was a liar, an outcast and a worm. Good Lord. Is that all you've got to say? Well, I'm going to the house across the road. Well, they won't say any different there. They have a child's nurse, idiot. Maybe she'll be able to stop that noise. Now then, listen to me. I want to know your address. I can't stick it. This is a very serious matter. Thank you, no, I think I'll wait until dinner. Now then, <clears throat> where do you live? Who is your father? <laughs> well, look at me when I'm talking to you. Father, where is he? Well, think, man, think. Dada. Yes, that's the chap. Where is he? <sighs> well, I don't know if this child is concealing something to you or if he's simply thoroughly vapid and uninformed about current events. It's hard to tell, sir. More or less admits that he has a father and then just clams up. Never seems to have occurred to the blasted child while sitting of an evening chatting with the old man to ask him his name and address. It's often the way, sir. The younger generation takes little interest in the activities of its elders. It has occurred to me, sir. You haven't had one of your ideas, have you, Jeeves? Not for ridding ourselves of the infant, no, sir. But it seems to me that we might, being burdened with the child, at least use it to solve Mr. Glossop's problem. Really? I don't see that. Well, sir, I attended the performance of a cinema film recently in which the estranged parents of the child were brought together again by the tot in question. Well, how? If I remember rightly, sir, it said... Dada, doesn't you love mummy no more? Dada, doesn't you love mummy no more? And that did the trick, did it, Jeeves? Oh, yes, indeed, sir. The picture concluded with a close-up of the happy pair in fond embrace, with the child looking on with natural gratification. Jeeves, I follow you absolutely. It's big. We lay the scene right here. Child centre stage. Girl left of centre. Tuppy upstage. Uh, dialogue leading up to line, child speaks line, something like uh, uh, boofle lady doesn't do love tuppy. Ah, can the child learn its line, Jeeves? Well, sir, if I might make the suggestion, I would advocate the words kiss tuppy. It's short, readily memorised, and has what I believe is technically termed the punch. Genius, Jeeves. No, you must say kiss tuppy. I'm sorry, unless you comply with our wishes in this matter, no more toffees will be forthcoming. It's no good talking to him like that, Jeeves. I'm doing my best, sir. Well, don't give him a toffee until he comes up with the goods. You're being far too soft on him. Let me have a go. Right, now then, say, kiss tuppy. Kiss tuppy. Kiss tuppy. There you are, you see, Jeeves, he did it. Well done, sir. Have you been eating these? No, sir. No, well, better hop down to the shop and get some more. Get about a hundredweight. Very good, sir. Right, now then. Toffee. Say, kiss Tuppy. Kiss Tuppy. Well done. Now, that's the last one for the moment. Emergency supplies on the way. 
It's Mr. Wooster, isn't it? We met with Hildebrand Glossop in New York. Oh, yes, yes. Elizabeth Vickers. Nice to see you. I don't understand. Is, is that your baby? Mine? Oh, good lord, no, no, no. I've, I've just got the use of it for a bit. Uh, we got to be real friends on the beach. Hello, baby. Ooh, friends, eh? Well, well, well. Small world and all that. I brought these back for Hildebrand. He won't seem to accept that all is over between us. Oh, the flowers and the chocolates. What's all this, Ed? Oh. I brought your gifts back, Hildebrand. What gifts? Those gifts. Roses, chocolates. Well, I never send them. Oh, how pathetic. And how typical, if I may say so. No, you blasted well may not say so. I never sent you any... dratted presents. I don't care whose name's on that blasted card. Don't care? Well, isn't that just like you? Do you care about anything, Hildebrand Glossop? Well, yes, I do, since you so kindly ask. I care about having my privacy disturbed by some dratted girl accusing me of buying her roses and chocolates. I bet you bought presents for that fat singer. I have no interest in any singer, fat or otherwise. Well, you seem to be showing her plenty of interest that night. Kiss Tuppy. Kiss Tuppy. What did he say? Kiss Tuppy. Kiss Tuppy. Good afternoon, miss. Kiss Tuppy. Kiss Tuppy! Kiss Tuppy! What the hell's going on Kiss here? Tuppy. Better give him one of these. He won't stop until you do. Kiss what on earth are you doing, Worcester? Well, we had the idea of Kiss training the infant Tuppy. to interject the phrase Kiss Tuppy into the conversation whenever a piece of toffee hove into view. We thought it might soften you up a bit. Kiss you... Tuppy! You trained the baby Kiss to... Kiss Tuppy! Oh, Hildebrand. <laughs> oh, I've never heard anything so ridiculous! Oh, you're such a fool, Tuppy. Tuppy. Just a silly, silly idea, really. And I do love you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Kiss Tuppy. <laughs> Good work. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I can't find Miss Wardle anywhere, Jeeves. I wonder if she might be visiting her old friends, the Price Ox. The Price Ox? The large white house on the right. White, right. Um, perhaps you gentlemen would be kind enough to take something over there for Mr. Worcester. Excuse us. Why, we were asked to deliver this. Oh, I thought there was one missing. Just put him down somewhere, will you? It's, uh, Marion here. Who? Marion Wardle. Never heard of her. You know, the singer. We were told that... Nay, I was... You! Aunt Agatha! Let's 
my Aunt Agatha. That's my soup. I demand to see Lucius Pip. Me too. Bertie. Gladys, what are you doing here? Why, well, I work here. Lucius offered me a wonderful job. Oh, did he? Well, then perhaps either you or he can tell me what my aunt's portrait is doing pasted all over the countryside. And what about my cockaliki soup? You. I thought I told you I never want to see your ugly mug again. Well, I like that. What about the money you owe me? I don't owe you one goddamn red cent. My wife looked up your cockamamie soup in a cookbook. It's cockaliki. And my nanny never wrote a cookbook. She didn't have to. It's in every cookbook from here to Vladivostok. <gasps> oh, Hildebrand! Oh. Elizabeth! Yes, well, none of this alters the fact that you used my painting. That's got nothing to do with me. That's what I pay an advertising agent for. When your butler suggested I buy one of my fiancé's paintings. What fiancé? Gladys and I are going to be married. We wanted you to be the first to know. Well, almost. This time you will go to South Africa and you will settle down and be of no further worry to your poor mother. No, Aunt Agatha. We were led astray, Aunt Agatha. Yes, well, there's some truth in that. Your cousin certainly has much to answer for. Take your hats off. Well, I must say, Jeeves, I think it was a dashed nerve of you selling my portrait of Aunt Agatha. Oh, you mustn't be cross with Jeeves, Bertie. Look how brilliantly he got rid of Claude and Eustace for me. Yes, well, tell me, though, Jeeves, how did you know that the kid belonged to the lesser price ox? And the woman in the village shop saw the child in Mr. Glossop's gardens, uh, and knowing the price ox, inquired whether Mr. Glossop was related. <coughs> And we're both better off than poor Tuppy. Yes, well, serves him right, him and his nanny's cockaliki soup. <laughs> you do something to cockaliki, something to really mortify him. You've made old Tuppy feel quite peaky. What can we do to fortify him? Brilliant. He'd lost sleep for that soup. Uh, Jeeves? At one fell swoop, the Slingsby group knocked Mr. Glossop for a loop, sir. Cause you do something to cock a leaky. That's give a no toppy group. Oh, cheerio. Something.